الحمد لله رب العالمين يا رب اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وأرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه واجعلنا ممن يستمعون القول ويتبعون أحسنه وادخلنا برحمتك في عبادك الصالحين واشهد ان لا اله الا الله ولي الصالحين واشهد ان محمدا عبده وحبيبه ورسوله سيدي ابا القاسم يا رسول الله صلى عليك الله يعلم الهدى واشهد انك بلغت الرساله واديت الامانه ونسحت الامه وكشفت القوم وجاهد لله حق جهاده عباد الله يقول الله تبارك وتعالى في محكم تنزيله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار. My dear brothers and respected sisters, I greet you all with السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. All praise to you to Allah. We bear witness and we testify that there is no deity worth of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we bear witness and we testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger and his life. All salawats and salams be upon our Prophet, upon his noble family, his righteous companions, and all those who follow his path till the last time. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, do you remember last week we talked about how to deal with grief in Islam? And today also we'll talk about one very, very important topic, and that is the importance of work in Islam. You know, every time when you wake up in the morning and you feel a bit lazy and you hesitate to go to work, I chose this topic for you and me to understand how important work is in Islam, especially when you work honorably to, to, to provide for yourself and your family. And every week, you remember we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those that were able to feed ourselves and our families to halal and to stay away from haram. Ya Rabbi And this is the word that even the prophets, all the prophets from Adam alayhi salam until the last prophet, uh, prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all of them earn their livings with their own hands. And this is stated even in the Quran when it comes to the Prophet Dawood, David, And this is also a problem, because sometimes being a religious leader or being a haji or being someone of status, let's say, in the community, sometimes we have to be very careful and not to take this for granted. And you go to some Muslim countries in particular, and you see some imams even with bodyguards. And you see imams, you know, surrounded with other people. They don't even touch anything. And let alone work or do something. Wallahi, well, that is not from Islam. Or Prophet even when he used to go on expeditions. You know, sometimes he used to prepare something. He wanted to be part of it. He doesn't want to just to sit down and other companions do everything for him. You know, when we wanted to prepare a, a meal one day, he said, one of them, I'm slaughtering the lamb, the other one, I'm doing this.
this world that's like said, I won't gather the wood. Because I don't want to just sit down and you guys do everything. He wanted to be part of every project. And even during the Battle of Pepe, you know that they used to uh, dig all those uh, 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 holes and all those things during that time. Prophet Islam was part of them. He used to dig just like anyone else. And this is very, very important, my dear brothers and sisters. And that I will mention later on, working in Islam, or Prophet Islam is not compared even with Jihad. And Prophet Islam, also in another hadith, he said, working is mandatory for every single Muslim after obligatory commands. You know, like prayer and, 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 and fasting and all that. After all these commands, working also comes comes next. So, not just to work, but also when we work something, let's say you've got a job, Islamically, you have to perfect it as well. The Prophet said, Wherely God loves, if any of you does a job, He does it with perfection. Not just, okay, just get it done. No. Any job that is entrusted to you, do it even if no one is around you. You know, with, with sometimes being a trainee or being doing something, no one is there to witness what you're doing. Always think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching. And this is very, very important. If you want to do something with perfection, doesn't matter who is watching you, doesn't matter who is passing what you're doing, think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first all the time. Um, working, my dear brothers and sisters, especially with the omen of facing a lot of challenges today, is because we are being lazy. You know, we are not working hard. We don't work with, with pride. As I said, you wake up in the morning and you're about to go to work. You look at your family and you see that whatever you're doing, every single sacrifice that you make for your family, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will honor you in this world and the next. Every single penny that you spend for your family, it will consider to be like giving charity. You understand? So this is very, very important. One of the advantages of work in Islam is it will make you financially independent. And this is very, very good because of Prophet He said in this hadith, nobody, no one has eaten a better meal than which one has earned with working with one's own hands. You know that that this that month, you know that that meal that you eat, you're about to eat, you go for dinner at home. You know that 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 food came from your earnings, with, from your own sweat. There's nothing better than that meal, my dear brothers and sisters. And also, Prophet Al Islam continues and he said, the Prophet of Allah, Dawood, used to eat from the earnings of his manual labor. You know, that room, he was a king. He was a mighty king. And he was a blacksmith. He earned his, his, his living with his own hands and he wasn't embarrassed about it. So it doesn't matter what kind of job you do. Whether you're a cleaner, whether you're a taxi driver, whether you're a bricklayer or whatever you are, if you do that, to, 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 to support yourself and your family in an honorable way, Wallahi, you should be proud of yourself. You should be proud of yourself. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, as I mentioned, those people that work hard for themselves, especially being independent. And when you're independent financially, it's not just for yourself and your family as well. What else is this important thing? You're able to help other people. Whether those people are your relatives or someone who is in need. You know, you're able to sponsor an orphan. You're able to help those 
people of need, whether in your own country or even in Australia here. And this is very, very important. Why? Because whatever you do, even planting a tree, if you're not able to do anything else, whoever eats from that tree, whether it's human, whether it's birds or any animals, you will be rewarded for it. The Prophet said, never does the Muslim plant or cultivate, but has reward for him, for what he, for what the beasts eat or the birds eat, or anything else eats out of that plant. If you're not able to work in anything else, at least do something good. You know, we, we have a saying in my language, and it says, you better work for free than stay home for free. If you if you don't work in anything else, at least go out and help someone. If you don't think who could have come and help clean the mosque or any mosque nearby, do the maintenance if you want that reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And being financially dependent and being able to help other people. But what is also one of the most important things in Islam is that you're proud of what you're doing, earning for yourself, your family, and you don't wait for anyone to help you. You don't put your head and beg and wait who is helping you. Do you understand? This is a key. Muslims should be proud to have that instant. Not to be of, of those people who always ask others for help. For Prophet said, it is better for any one of you. And listen to this hadith, and this hadith should be enough. For us to understand the importance of work in Islam. It is better for any one of you to take a rope and cut and bring a bundle of wood from the forest over his back and sell it. And Allah will save his face from the hellfire because of that. The rather than to ask the people who may give him or not. SubhanAllah. It is better to take a rope, cut some wood, and sell it. And Allah will, will save you because of that. Because you're doing for what? For yourself and your family to eat halal. That is better for you than to wait for someone whether or not to give you something or not. This is Islam, my dear brothers and sisters. And Allah mentioned in the Quran as well. And He said, or vice versa. The night we have made for you what? A cup means to rest. And we have made the day for you for livelihood, to work. Not to sit at home and play video games. Not to sit in the mosque and ask for Allah to give you because that's not gonna happen. You know, Umar ibn Khattar during his reign, being a little mini, during the day, he would never let people come and sit inside the mosque. He would keep them out to go and work. To go and work because he said, gold or silver won't rain from the sky. You have to search for your list, for your sustenance, for your provision. It won't come to you just like that. You understand? This is very, very important, my dear brothers and sisters. And also, Listen to this hadith. The Prophet said, even if the qiyam, the final hour, is about to approach, you see coming the qiyam, the doomsday. And he said, if you have a, a, you know, a tree in your hand, but you have that few seconds to plant that tree, he said, do it. Even though you see that qiyam is coming, you see that you've got one minute or two minutes or five minutes left. He said, plan that before the hour comes. That shows how important work is in Islam. <coughs> how many of our brothers and sisters that they, they waste for you, their youth, if they are a burden to their parents, the parents have to pay their bills, the parents have to do everything, they have to 
work hard, all they do is no responsibilities whatsoever, no, no taking actions for themselves, not working, not doing anything. Well, like sometimes I feel that maybe it's our fault as well. My fault and yours as parents. Why? Because we treat them that way. I am like you, same thing. I suffered growing up. You know, I had to do things on my own, everything. Now maybe I don't want my kids to go through those things what I went through. Maybe it's a good thing in one way, but it's not good on the other way because we are spoiling them. They grow up and they don't understand how to be responsible. If they don't understand how to be responsible for themselves, how are they going to be fathers and, and, and husbands in the future? You understand? Teach your children, number one priority in Islam is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But also one of the things is to please Allah, is to work hard, to earn your bliss in a in halal way, in an honorable way. And that is what I mentioned at the beginning, that is, or probably that is what I've said, that seeking halal risk, risk means sustenance, what you eat, is a duty, is mandatory after doing fun things. After praying and fasting and all that, working is also mandatory in Islam. And it's compared to what I said in the beginning, it's compared to a mujahid. You know, in Mujahid now we don't understand because there's no open war. But during now, the Prophet, all those expeditions, all those battles that happened, Allah used to praise those people that used to fight on his cause. And in this hadith, where Prophet Allah says, Indeed, Allah loves a servant who work and has skills. Whoever struggles to make ends meet for his family that he is equal with the Mujahid in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You work hard, even if you have to work two jobs, three jobs, don't be embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed, you're doing this for your family. We don't want to feed our children with something that is haram. You understand, this is very important. If you're young, even if people want to give you money, you know, the time during the time of the Prophet Abdul Rahman ibn Auf, you know the the, the the amazing companion of the Prophet Israel Salam when he came to Medina, he was one of the richest men in Mecca. He left everything back when they migrated to Medina. He had nothing, zero. The companion from Medina wanted to give half his wealth. And he was also one of the richest people in Medina. What did Abdul Rahman ibn Auf say to him? He said, no, just show me where the market is, where the soul is, because I want to earn my own living. SubhanAllah, Allah bless me with a lot of wealth. This is how we should be happy. Not waiting for someone to give us. Not waiting say, ah, oh, you see, my brother is working and I shouldn't work. Or my mother or my father is working and that is enough. No, earn your own living. Because that should make you feel proud. You, you did this yourself. You did that work yourself. And a lot of those children, subhanAllah, because they don't work, and they don't understand the meaning of working, how hard it is to earn money, especially nowadays, with all these expenses happening. And they grow up, maybe parents work for 50 years. I don't know, I've seen people like that, by the way. The parents die. All their earnings for 50 years left to their children. They spent it within weeks or months. Gambling, haram here, doing this. Why? Because they didn't earn it with their own sweat. And it's easy to spend. We have another saying in my language. You know, when you go to, to market, a guy, he sent his cow to sell. And one wise man was very wise and he said to, to this young man, he said, this cow that you're selling, is it yours or it belongs to your father? Because if it belongs to your father, it's easy for me to do business with you. If it's yours, you know, it's hard because you've heard it with your own sweat. 
You don't give it away that easy. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those that every word that we do, we do it honorably. And we are able to feed ourselves and our families in an honorable way. Ya Allah, To make us of those that we are able to, to work for our families. And whatever we do, may Allah consider that to be salam of us, Ya Allah, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those that we are able to educate our children and our families according to Islam, Ya Allah, And to make us of those that we are able to respect our parents and those people who are older than us, Ya Allah, Oh Allah, make us of those that we love one another only for your sake, Ya Allah, Make us of those that you are pleased with us in this world and the next, Ya Allah, Oh Allah, make us of those that we love you and your prophet more than anything else, Ya Allah, Make us of those that will be with the prophet on the day of judgment and who will bring from this out, Ya Allah, Oh Allah, make us of those who will be the neighbors of the Prophet in Jannah, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa qulu qawli hadha, wa astaghfirullah hadhi wa lakum astaghfirullah. Say astaghfirullah. Inna.